ever wondered if you could learn British English in just 15 minutes? Well, you've come to the right place. Welcome to our crash course, where we aim to give you a quick yet comprehensive introduction to the elegant realm of British English. This isn't about mastering the Queen's English in a quarter of an hour, but it's a great start, especially if you're keen on understanding the basics. In this video, we will cover three key areas. First, we'll focus on pronunciation, the cornerstone of any language. Then we'll move on to common phrases, those everyday expressions that will make you sound just like a local. Finally, we'll delve into some unique British slang, because isn't that part of the fun? So, whether you're an avid language learner or simply looking to brush up your skills before a trip to the UK, this video is for you. Ready to jump into the world of British English? Hold on tight! First off, let's tackle the most distinctive aspect of British English, the pronunciation. Now, the British accent is quite unique and can vary widely across the regions. However, for our purposes, we'll focus on what's known as Received Pronunciation, or RP. This is the accent often associated with the UK internationally, and it's what you'll typically hear on the BBC. Let's start with one of the most noticeable differences between British and American English, the pronunciation of the R at the end of words. In British English, this R is often silent. For example, in the word water, the R isn't pronounced, so it sounds more like wato. On the other hand, in American English, you would pronounce the R, so it sounds like water. Another crucial difference lies in the pronunciation of vowel sounds. In British English, the short A sound, as in cat, is pronounced as a short, sharp A, almost like E. In American English, this sound is more relaxed and drawn out, sounding more like R. So, cat, in British English, would sound more like cat, while in American English, it would sound closer to cut. Let's move on to the long O sound. In British English, this is a pure vowel sound, like in the word phone. It's pronounced as faun. However, in American English, it's pronounced with a bit of an R or er sound at the end, making it sound more like phone. Yet, another difference lies in the pronunciation of the U sound. In British English, words like tube and tune have a distinct U sound. So, tube sounds like tube, and tune sounds like tune. In contrast, in American English, these words are pronounced without the ye. So, tube becomes tube, and tune becomes tune. You might be thinking, wow, that's a lot to take in. But don't worry, like anything, mastering pronunciation takes time and practice. It's all about training your ear to hear the differences and then training your mouth to make the right shapes and sounds. One good way to practice is by listening to and mimicking native speakers. You could watch British TV shows or movies, listen to British radio, or even find a language exchange partner from the UK. With time and patience, you'll start to get the hang of it. And remember, it's not about sounding perfect or getting rid of your own accent. Accents are a beautiful reflection of our individual histories and cultures. Rather, it's about understanding and being understood, about communicating effectively and confidently. So don't be afraid to give it a go. With a bit of practice, you'll start to notice improvements. And who knows? You might even start to enjoy the sound of British English rolling off your tongue. Remember, practice makes perfect when it comes to pronunciation. Keep trying! Next up, we have some common phrases you'll hear in Britain. In British English, you'll find a plethora of phrases, full of character and colour, that are commonly used across the country. Let's delve into some of these phrases to understand their meanings and when to use them. One phrase you'll often hear is, fancy a cuppa? This is an invitation to have a cup of tea. Cuppa is short for cup of and is typically followed by tea. So, if someone asks, fancy a cuppa? They're essentially asking if you would like to join them for a cup of tea. This phrase is used casually among friends, family or colleagues during breaks or social gatherings. Another common phrase is cheers. While internationally, cheers is known as a toast during a drink, in Britain it's used in everyday language to mean thank you or goodbye. For example, if someone holds the door open for you, you can say cheers as a way to express your gratitude. Similarly, you can end a phone call by saying cheers before hanging up. It's a versatile phrase that you can use in a variety of situations. 
Bloody hell is a phrase you may have heard in British films or television. It's a mild exclamation of surprise, disbelief or annoyance. It's not considered rude, but it's definitely informal, so you might not want to use it in a professional setting or with someone you don't know well. Then there's Bob's your uncle. No, this doesn't mean that everyone in Britain has an uncle named Bob. It's a phrase used to indicate that something is simple or easy to achieve. For instance, if you're giving someone directions, you might end with, and then take a left at the roundabout, Bob's your uncle, you're there. It's a fun and quirky way to say, and there you have it. Moving on. Chuffed to bits is a uniquely British phrase that means to be very pleased or happy about something. If you've just received some good news, you could exclaim, I'm chuffed to bits. It's a phrase that really captures the joy of the moment. Taking the mickey is another phrase steeped in British culture. If someone is taking the mickey, they're teasing or making fun of someone, often in a friendly, playful manner. It's not meant to be hurtful, but rather a bit of light-hearted banter. Finally, it's not my cup of tea. This phrase is used to politely express that you don't like or enjoy something. For example, if you're not a fan of horror movies, you might say, horror films? They're not my cup of tea. It's a gentle way of expressing personal preference. Now, these are just a few examples of the many fascinating phrases you'll encounter in British English. Each one is a little window into the culture, humor, and unique charm of Britain. Remember, language is not just about grammar and vocabulary, but also about understanding the culture and context in which it's used. These phrases will make you sound more natural when speaking British English. Ready for some fun? We're diving into unique British slang now. Let's start with a quintessential British term, chuffed. If a Brit tells you they're chuffed, don't worry, they're not upset or angry. Quite the contrary. Chuffed means to be very pleased or happy about something. So if your British friend says they're chuffed to bits, they're extremely delighted or proud. Next up is a word that might sound a bit somber if you're not familiar with it. Gutted. No, it doesn't have anything to do with fish or butchery. When someone in the UK says they're gutted, they're expressing their disappointment or sadness. For instance, if they miss their favorite football team's winning match, they might tell you, I'm gutted I couldn't see the game. Now here's a phrase that might leave you scratching your head if you hear it out of context. Taking the piss. No, it's not about a bathroom break. This phrase is used to describe someone who's making fun of something or someone, often in a mocking or sarcastic way. So if you hear someone saying, are you taking the piss? They're probably not asking about your bathroom habits. They're asking if you're joking or pulling their leg. Let's move on to knackered. If you had a long, exhausting day and all you want is to fall into bed, you're knackered. It's a colorful way to say you're tired or worn out. So if a Brit tells you they're knackered, they're likely ready for a good night's sleep. Another term you might come across is gobsmacked. It's a fun word, isn't it? If something leaves you gobsmacked, it leaves you utterly astonished or surprised. The term comes from the old English word gob, which means mouth and smacked, like being hit. So if you're gobsmacked, you're so surprised that you could have been smacked in the mouth. Now, bog standard. If you hear this term, don't start looking for a bog. It's a way of saying that something is ordinary, typical or basic. For example, if someone refers to their car as bog standard, they're saying it's a regular, unmodified car. Finally, let's look at bees' knees. It's not about an insect's anatomy, I promise. This phrase is used to describe something that is excellent or of high quality. So if you hear someone say, this tea is the bee's knees, they're saying it's fantastic or the best. As you can see, British slang is a colorful and fun aspect of the English language. These terms and phrases add flavor to conversations and are a great way to understand British culture better. Remember, language is not just about grammar and vocabulary. It's about understanding the nuances, the culture and the people. And slang is a big part of that. So don't be gutted if you don't get these terms right away. Keep practicing and soon you'll be chuffed with your progress. And who knows? You might even find yourself taking the piss out of your friends with your newfound British slang. But remember, don't get too knackered with all the learning. British slang can be a lot of fun to use, and it can help you fit in with native speakers. Now, let's recap what we've learned today. We began our journey into British English by navigating through the intricacies of pronunciation. We dove into the depths of the British accent, 
uncovering its unique tones, nuances and quirks. From the short and crisp A to the rounded R, we ventured through a plethora of sounds that are quintessential to the British tongue. The beauty of these sounds and their variations across the United Kingdom is what gives British English its rich diversity and charm. We then moved on to common phrases, the building blocks of everyday conversation. We discovered that taking the biscuit has nothing to do with a sweet treat and that Bob's your uncle is not about an actual Uncle Bob. We learned that cheers is more than a toast at a party and a cuppa is a Brit's best friend. These phrases, though puzzling at first, are the keys to understanding and participating in daily British banter. Next, we ventured into the vibrant world of British slang, a treasure trove of expressions that are uniquely British. We learned that chuffed means pleased and gutted is to be deeply disappointed. We found out that knackered refers to being extremely tired and gobsmacked is to be utterly astonished. These colorful expressions add layers of meaning and emotion to our conversations, painting vivid pictures with words. Now, what's the takeaway from all this? It's simple. Embrace the journey of learning British English. Enjoy the process of discovering new sounds, phrases and expressions. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. In fact, mistakes are our best teachers. They show us where we need to improve and give us the opportunity to learn and grow. Remember, language is not just about correct grammar and pronunciation. It's about expressing ourselves, connecting with others and understanding different cultures. So, keep practicing what you've learned today. Listen to British music, watch British films and engage in conversations with native speakers. Surround yourself with the language until it becomes a part of you. And most importantly, have fun. Learning a language should be an exciting adventure, not a daunting task. As we wrap up, I encourage you to stay curious and open-minded. Keep exploring the fascinating world of British English. Remember, every word you learn, every phrase you understand, and every slang you use brings you one step closer to mastering the language. Remember, learning a new language is a journey. Enjoy the ride, and you'll be speaking British English in no time.